the orienting response is not something that maybe we think about often enough. It is a postural set that allows us to get ready to act. And we might think about this with kids with sensory deficits. So for example, if I have a kiddo in mind who has mm, autism as an example, and I call their name, Johnny, 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 and I don't observe a shift in gaze, a shift in ear, a shift in body, we would define that as an orienting response. That the body, the head, the ear, the eyes, orient in the direction, they don't all have to happen at the same time, in the direction of getting ready to do something, especially with the hand. And the orienting response is the postural readiness. When we are handling, if we were to slow down, if you can imagine this in your mind, if I'm putting my hands on the client and I may too quickly move into the movement without pausing to get that body ready to orient. Do you see what I just did with my hands? I went from that slumped, so familiar, posterior pelvic tilt, thoracic flexion position into upright. And as I know that the toy that the child wants to reach is over there on the right side, I incrementally with my hands get that trunk ready to orient to the object by providing elongation on the weight-bearing side, by increasing rotation through the spine, by helping translate that input all the way up into the neck, right? These are the orienting responses, and perhaps we need to describe them this way and observe them this way in what we are building into our clinical reasoning. 